Hello there and welcome to the Story Art Podcast, the place where we unravel the secrets of storytelling in order to become better professionals and better human beings. My name is Alex Glod and I will be the host for this podcast. In our previous episode, we talked about why leaders need storytelling today more than ever. And since in this first season, we're going to focus on how storytelling can be incredibly important for leaders today, we're going to continue by answering the question of when and where do we use storytelling as leaders? And we might have some intuitions when it comes to answering this question. We might think to ourselves when people need a nudge in the right direction. They are missing out on a little something that could help them advance in their story. When people are losing hope and motivation and we can step in and save the day. When people are losing sight of what's important and they need to be reminded what they should focus on or what they should value. Or in moments when they feel overcome by their emotions and they don't see the bigger picture and they just need some clarity and perspective. These are all very good answers. But the best universal answer to that question is when it's relevant for the journey that the people we're leading, on, we're leading are on. We're all on a journey. Either we're on a journey of continuous development, we're looking to become better versions of ourselves, or we're on a journey of repeating the same pattern, going for the same cycle, not really moving forward. Depending on the journey that the people are on, as well as our understanding of, of that journey and where exactly they are on that journey, that's when we can truly, quickly, intuitively understand when to tell a story. For example, ever since our last episode, I've been reflecting on the fact that we're going to deal with the new financial crisis as the whole coronavirus situation continues. And I thought to myself, what have I learned from my previous experience with the 2008 financial crisis? Back then, I was 19 years old. I had just started my career. And I wasn't really worried about the future. I was working as a bartender and waiter, making a lot of money. I lent a lot of money to my colleagues, knowing that one day they're going to pay me back. I wasn't really interested in getting a university degree. I was really happy with the life I had. And I was really proud of taking care of myself without needing anyone's help. For me, moving to Sibiu, leaving my hometown, was a great act of defiance towards my parents. I could show them that I did not need them in order to take care of myself and have a future. And boy, oh boy, was, it, was I in for a surprise. Because a month and a half uh, into my new job as a, as a waiter, when I was doing a lot of great stuff and having a lot of money, the crisis started hitting. And I started seeing that people were not coming to the restaurants anymore. They were not leaving tips. All of a sudden, I could feel how the rug was pulled from under my feet. My first instinct was to not acknowledge it. I did my best to try to solve this issue on my own. There were a lot of people that wanted to help me. But I said to myself, no, 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 I got this. I got this. I'm good. I'm good. But in reality, there weren't really more options for me other than working as a bartender and waiter. And the first year of crisis were incredibly awful for people working in this domain. I worked in three different places that got shut down eventually. And in the last place... I got fired after a few months and I ended up a year later since the crisis started that I had no money, no savings, no option of paying my bills, no job opportunities and I had to leave Sibiu and I had to come back home to live with my parents. I was incredibly ashamed, embarrassed and angry with myself that I got into this situation. I was in no way responsible or, or at, to blame for the financial crisis. But I hated that I got into this situation. I was incredibly angry with myself. And so I decided to really sit down and try to fully understand what the hell happened. And there were a few things that were incredibly obvious. First and foremost, I wasn't planning for the future. I really had no perspective of what my life will be in a few years. I thought that I'm just going to keep on making money. Life will be good. And I didn't take into account that from time to time things can go a bit bad. Second... Lending people money is the worst investment strategy anyone could adopt because especially in a moment of crisis, people are not going to pay you back. And I learned that the hard way. Third, I realized that if we do not invest in our education, this is going to come back and haunt us. And it haunted me a great deal. That's why once I got back home, I started 
to really do something about it. I got two new jobs. I became incredibly financially disciplined. And my first goal was that I would be back that autumn and I would start studying in a university in Sibiu and I would get my life together. And I stopped believing in this idea that, oh, a man has to... Uh, you know, manage all by himself. And I accepted that from time to time, I need to ask for help and I need to let other people help me. And luckily, in a few months since I got back, I had a great job. I had joined a student organization called ISEC that has really changed my life and I could finally have a better perspective for the future. This experience has helped me prepare for this situation. Luckily, now I can rely on at least... If I don't make any money for the next six or seven months, I have the the savings that I can count on. I know that in the next six or seven months, if I don't have anything to work on, I'll invest in learning new skills and I'll do my best to find a new direction in my career. That's why I'm also trying podcasting right now because I know I need to readapt to the new, new situation that I'm at. And last but not least... I am doing my best to ask for help and to look at other people, what they're doing, and try to learn from their experience. If you are also in a moment where you feel right now that you're angry with yourself, that you're not fully prepared for the situation, well then, first and foremost, sit down with yourself and do an honest assessment of your lifestyle. Where are you wasting money? Look at whether whether you are saving for the future or not. If not, this is the best place to start. Okay, the best place to start would have been months ago, but it's not too late. Start being more financially disciplined and realize where you're wasting money, wasting resources. Then think about your education. What skills could you learn in the next few months that could give you more perspectives and more opportunities going forward? And last but not least, ask for help. Think about who you can access in your network that can help you out and that can support you through these challenging times. Now, whether the story touches you can depend to a certain extent on, let's say, my charisma or in the pacing of the story, how it was structured. But the key element is whether if this story is relevant for the journey you are in. If you find yourself in that place where that I found myself in 2008 and you resonate with that experience, that is what makes this story effective more than ever. If you truly understand what people are going through, you will fully you will have this great intuition on knowing what story is relevant and when it is important for it to be told. Stories have this great ability of pushing us in the right direction, of giving us that little bit of inspiration and wisdom, and it gives us a sense of responsibility that, hey, we might not be in the position of choosing how our story begins, but we have the choice of how the story ends and we can move it in the direction that we choose. And so in order for you to answer the question of when is it a good time to tell a story, sit down and try to understand what journey is your audience or the people you're trying to lead, what journey are they on? Then reflect on your own journey. When you were in their same situation, what is it that you needed as inspiration, as a push, as a nudge? And what is it that you were dealing with at the time that was not useful or constructive for you moving forward? If the people you're trying to lead are stuck in an unhealthy cycle, be honest with yourself and ask yourself, when did I go into a similar pattern? What kept me there? And what was needed for me in order to get out of it and move forward? Once you manage to find that inspiration, that connection between your story and their story, the next question you need to answer is, where exactly is the best setting or framing for me to tell that story? And this is incredibly important because we do have a lot of options, of course, but you also need to make sure that the people are ready and willing to listen. For example, in the beginning of a team meeting, that is the perfect time to tell a story. It's definitely a worse time to say it at the end of the meeting because mostly, most of the times at the end of the me- meeting, people are bored, they want to get out of there, and usually they get frustrated if the meeting wasn't effective. If you tell the story in the beginning, it sets the tone for the rest of the meeting and it stays with them. But maybe this is a story that only needs an audience of one person. In that case, a one-on-one conversation or a mentoring session could be the best context for you to tell that story. You have an intimate space, it's just the two of us, and you can share that story with them and you can 
make sure that you have enough time and the space for them to respond to you and see the impact. Maybe the story isn't just relevant for the team meeting, it's relevant for everybody in the company. So in that case, if your company has a town hall meeting or if you know other leaders in other departments, ask to make sure that you have a five-minute slot to tell that story if you know it's relevant for the journey that they are on. And of course, training sessions, induction meetings, a great deal of opportunities are out there for you. Once you truly understand the journey that of the people you're trying to lead, you will understand how you can serve them better. Our job as leaders isn't necessarily to babysit them and you know always tell them what to do. The point of the story is to inspire them to take responsibility for their own narrative moving forward and to acknowledge where, where are their faults, where are their mistakes, and how can they make better decisions moving forward. This, of course, requires you to be vulnerable and to admit your own wrongdoings of the past. Otherwise, there will be no true connection. The story from before would have not had any impact on you if I wouldn't have been honest with the bad habits I had during that financial crisis and the time leading up to it. And so in the same way, when you are going to tell that story, you need to be comfortable with admitting who you used to be and the steps you needed in order to get to where you are today. And if you're worried in any way about being vulnerable as a leader, luckily, that's what we're going to cover in our next episode. But until then, here's a little homework that I'd invite you to do uh, before our next episode. First and foremost, ask yourself, what journey are the people that I'm trying to lead on? Think of where are they right now? Are they trying to become better people? Are they trying to become better versions of themselves? And if yes, what type? Like, what exactly are they looking to develop in themselves? If they're on a journey of endless cycles and repeating the same patterns, what patterns are they repeating? What exactly is standing in their way? In the same way, ask the same question for the people that are on their road of continuous development. What is standing in their way? Why is it that they haven't made this leap a month, a year, or two, or three years ago? What is still there that is not helping them advance quicker. Then think to yourself, where do I connect with their experience? Find something from your own story that is relevant to their experience and admit to yourself where you were. If you were on the same point with them, be honest with yourself and simply detail all of the the faults of your character, all the mistakes you've made or all the things that you never considered that would actually help you. What was your trajectory? How did you change? How did you become better? And then think of when or where is my first opportunity to tell that story. And I invite you to do it. Don't wait for another week or two weeks or three weeks. Now, of course, we are limited because most of the times we are going to have to do this online, but it is the best place to start. If there's one thing we are craving right now, it's connection. We all need connection. And it would be so nice in these times that we receive from our leaders a little bit of a gentle nudge, a sign that they care about where we are in our journey, a a way in which they show that they trust us and they want us to leave us with that wisdom that will help us advance. Be that leader for your team, for the people you want to inspire. And give them that hope, that inspiration, that nudge that they desperately need right now. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. I'll see you in the next one where we're going to talk about vulnerability and how we get comfortable with vulnerability as leaders. Before you go, I'd love to leave you with today's quote that comes from Walt Whitman that says a little something like this. Not I nor anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it by yourself. It is not far, it is within reach. Perhaps you have been on it since you were born and did not know. Perhaps it is everywhere, on water or on land. We are all on our own journey in life, and we are each responsible for our own trajectory. But at the same time, we do owe it to ourselves to assist each other in this process and to making sure we get to where we want to be together and not alone. Thank you. I'll see you next time.